Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.67 and in this lesson we're going to talk about using the FM4 not as an FM synthesizer but as an additive synthesizer and why exactly that's a very helpful activity for you to do before you go in and start to mess around with any frequency modulation here inside of the matrix. But before we do that, just a review of the organ because this is actually going to come back full circle. Right now with the organ, all I have is the primary, AKA the fundamental playing here. So if I play an A, we see that's coming out at 220. And what I can do here is I can start to add in other harmonics. Now, the nice thing is that on this particular instrument, it tells me exactly what that is. So I'm adding in the fifth, I'm adding in the eighth, which is an octave. I'm adding in the 12th, the 15th, another octave, the 17th, the 19th, and the 22nd. So it's so easy for me to just look at this and say, okay, if I want the octaves, I can put in some sub. And we start to see that come up there at 110. I could add in another octave above at 440. I could add in here at 880. And then again, another octave up, whatever that might be. So this is only important because what we're doing here is really exactly what we're going to be doing with the FM4. This is additive. We're just adding in new sine waves. But what we're making here is a complex waveform based on what we talked about at the beginning of this series. We can see that there's not a whole lot of logic to this spectrum. All right. And I can make this even crazier if I decided to like pull just this one all the way up. There's not a lot of logic as to why that harmonic is going to be peaking out. So when we go into something like the FM4 and I load up the initialized patch and I set this to one and we play our A note, we can see that coming up here at 220, all right, as the fundamental. Now what I have the ability to do in here is I can turn on these other oscillators. These aren't working as operators because they're not applying any frequency modulation at this point, but I can start to turn up number two. And right now it's operating at a sub audio rate. But if I choose to pull this up to like 0.5, be able to both hear and see where this is falling on the frequency spectrum. And we can see that this is coming up here at 110, right? I could go in and I could take this further and I could set this guy to two, which is going to be another octave up from our 220 fundamental and we'll get 440. And maybe this is the harmonic that I really want to hype. And I could also go in here, set this to four, or maybe I'll set it to six so that we're working with a perfect fifth interval. So this right here is additive, and this is what I would refer to as being a complex waveform. We can adjust these levels to taste. These are all adhering to our main um, amplitude envelope here so I could change this if I wanted we can hear that we might actually evoke some really odd dissonances if we even play consonant intervals because of this series that we have set up Like so. So, I mean, this is kind of lame and boring, but it's a really good example. And this is going to teach you how to find different ratios that work. And the reason you want to do something like this, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to subtly detune these in a second so you can see that. But when you're first learning and needing to figure out ratios, it is highly encouraged to just start this way. Work with this in additive, come up with some spectrums that sound pleasing to your ear, because if you do that from the start, when we start to turn these guys into operators, and then 
start to evoke some frequency modulation, it's going to sound nice. And we're going to understand that it will sound nice because of these pleasing ratios here. But I'm going to go in here. I'm going to subtly detune these because this is helpful to know. You can just double click in here and then you have access to three decimal places out. And you'll see why I do this in a second. So I'm just going to set this one here. We'll set this to 1.997. And we'll set this to 6.002. And again, if I double click, we can actually see that those have stuck. So that's very important to working with this synthesizer here. So now if I listen back. It doesn't make that big of a difference, but it will in a second, because now we're going to take this synthesizer and turn it from something that's purely additive into uh, being able to create something that we can then sculpt away in a subtractive method. So I'm going to go into the effects. You know where this is going. I'm going to add in an FX layer here. And then what I'm going to do is add three different versions of the Bitwig distortion. At this point, I really should probably save a preset with it <laughs> working the way I want. But we'll go into each of these real quick and set this up. What I'm going to do is instead of using the EQ after the fact, I'm just going to use these post filters here. I'm going to dial in different settings. I'm going to want to use a solid state setting for my lows. Let me also just add a dry band here. Okay, so this one's just not going to have any effects on it. see what we've done and now we're starting to hear why that detune is making a difference we can see things moving around a little bit okay because they're fighting for space because a lot of these numbers here since these are like octave ranges they're fighting for the exact same harmonic space awesome all right i think i'm happy with that we'll go to this it's going to be our mid band i'm actually going to evoke maybe type A of the tube. And we can see what this has done to our frequency spectrum. Maybe I'll cut out some more of the lows. Perfect. And last but not least, I can add in some high. Let's use the other model. See what that's done to our spectrum. We'll just pull this probably all the way up. All right, very, very cool. And now what I'm going to be able to do is mix all of these together. So this is still kind of working in an additive principle in that we're using distortion on our different bands. And let's see what we're able to come up with here. that's pretty grimy. If I want, I can now add a ladder filter to try and control this a little bit. It's already set to the ADSR envelope.
the end in a little LFO. We can experiment with taking this down another octave. Or not. Maybe add a little glide. And there we came up with a very complicated wave shape uh, by just using the FM4 in an additive mode. And because these are all very nicely aligned based on our ratios, when we add in distortion, we know that distortion, analog model distortion, is going to hype certain logical frequencies, either even or odd harmonics based on our settings. And then we could throw in a ladder filter. So this is a really cool little method of using our FM synthesizer as an additive synth going even further by throwing in parallel distortion here and in a lot of ways, multi-band distortion, and then using a filter to control it. So I'm only showing you all of this because I want you to go in here and play with these controls here without even thinking about the matrix. Hear what sorts of sounds you can come up with and uh, let me know how that goes for you. Thank you so much for watching and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.